This is called cheesecloth. I don't know why it's called cheesecloth, but even in French it said fromage. It's used in cheese making. Oh, really? Today we're going to be drinking the oldest whiskey we've ever had. I'm Dan. And I'm Eddie. And we're the Deathless Dogs. This fish-shaped decanter bottle is from my dad's friend Terry, who I've known my entire life. This is Ezra Brooks' 152-month-old whiskey. For those of you not great at math, 152 months is just under 13 years, basically. When we got this decanter, I looked it up online and found other Ezra Brooks ones that said 13 years. Uh, so this is clearly like just under that. Just <laughs> under know. that. Uh, they gave you an exact month count. As far as identifying marks on the decanter, on the bottom it says 1970. So that's when it was put into this lovely rainbow trout. It spent 50 to 51 years inside of this fish. This is genuine heritage China. Prior to being in the fish for these 50 to 51 years, it spent just under 13 years in a barrel, which would put it at about 1957 or so, was when it was take. distilled. I mean, it's older than my dad. It's older than the guy who gave it to us. I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah. this this can go one of two ways. This is either going to be pretty damn good or like, oh no, <laughs> we don't know. We might both have to like call an ambulance, which... Is good for us because we're not far from ambulance. Yeah, they're they're right over there, so we're fine in that respect. There's a few things you have to worry about with old decanters like this. The first one, the most common one you'll find, is lead poisoning. Because if they are porcelain decanters, as this one says, it's genuine heritage china, that can contain lead, and there's worry that the lead will leach into the whiskey over time. What I've looked up and found about that is that that would really only occur if the decanter was fired improperly or there wasn't like an even seal on the inside. And if that were the case, you probably still would not have liquid inside of here like we do. So first concern being lead poisoning, we just won't drink very much of it. Yeah, I mean, this is a fresh bottle. It's sealed, I believe. Correctly, yeah. it has the seal on it. Yeah, I mean, there's tape that. around the neck yeah. with the tax stamp. It's the whole thing. So it's been sealed. It's not leaky, obviously. Your other big worry in these decanters is how they were stored. I don't exactly know where Terry was keeping these in his house. Prior to him coming into possession of this, this was at a restaurant in our town called The New Villa, which closed. And uh, they had a bunch of these decanters there. They say these decanters, I mean, while sealed... Still not like the same as a corked bottle, glass bottle seal. And even glass bottles when you store them can get a little weird. If they're stored in like basement crawl spaces or something, you can get a little bit of a musty basement kind of thing going on. So we'll see if that happens here. Terry got a bunch of these decanters when the restaurant closed. Because I believe his mom worked there. And that's how he had the hookup. So he got a bunch of them, and he said he drank a little of one because he accidentally broke it when he was moving it once. Like, the top broke off. So he poured some out and drank it and said it was amazing. I'm looking forward to opening this and hoping that we have something very amazing <laughs> inside of here. I mean, this is history. Yeah, I don't even know how this opens, honestly. I know the head comes off, but I don't know if it's a pull or a turn uh, i imagine there's like a cap inside the fish head yeah i don't know we're gonna it's tape there's tape around i believe the fish head is like something that comes off and, and then there will a be a secondary the... cap yeah could be but we've got to get through the tape here we don't have a knife but i do have a pipe saw so i'll very carefully break the tape around here there goes the fish head. The fish head did have a cork inside, but that cork broke. Oh yeah, we're coming apart. I just pushed it down in, because it was just the butt of the cork. You know, smelling it though? It doesn't smell weird. It doesn't smell weird, it smells like bourbon to me. Yeah, I think we just actually broke the cork by taking the head off. And I didn't do it with the saw, because there is like this lip, so it's not like I sawed through the cork, but when I pulled it, I went, you know, sideways, because I didn't know what was going on here. I should have just gave it a straight. But even still, I think that might have popped. Given the, the state of this, 
Yeah, I mean, there's fragments. And if you want to hold that. I'll hold the filter. Look at how fancy we're getting here. All right, we're going to see what happens here. It looks like liquor to me. That's a dark liquid right there. That's not a full bottle pour, but... It's very close. I mean, there's a little spillage here. Do you have a few cork fragments, but that's to be expected as I just broke the cork. It smells really good. I'm going to tell you that. It does. Much. It's It smells great. That basement funk they kind of tell you to worry about is not present here at all. Let's go for a little pour. That is the darkest bourbon I've seen in a long time. I think we should get in on the nose here. There is a little bit of that like mustiness, but not like... I'd say it's very traditional. I'd say this is corn forward. You're getting those vanilla and caramel notes. Mm -hmm. This is right down Main Street. This is 1950s America right here. I can't even handle this. Oh, there's caramel. Like, I'd say it's, like, very caramely. It's very, very classic. I imagine just at the time, this is just what bourbon was, you know? Yeah. There's, like, a little bit of mustiness to it, but not bad at all. Yeah, just classic, classic notes. When you think of bourbon and, like, the typical description of what bourbon is and how it smells, how it tastes... It's what's happening here. Clink them and drink them. Okay, I just got to say that it doesn't taste how it smells. There's a little bit of a funk to the taste. A little bit, but not like unpleasantly. There's going to be that, that little bit of that mustiness, but very classic, just classic bourbon profile. You know, caramel, little, little brown sugary. At 90 proof, it's smooth. But there is a bit of sourness that isn't present in a lot of modern day bourbons. In an old Rolling Stones song, Mick Jagger sings about, And she plied me with bourbon so sour. There is a bit of like sourness to this one, if that makes sense. Yeah, from, um, from the old oak. It's a familiar taste, but at the same time, there's something a little bit different about it. And I feel like there's a bit of sourness to this one that we haven't had in different bourbons. Yeah, I would agree. You're getting that sweet and sour combo. That and finish is very oaky. You can tell. It's a, it's, I mean, it was nearly 13 years old when they bought, like, you can tell. You can tell in the color scheme, but also the taste. I don't even know. Like, it's, it's just... We're tasting something that was put into the fish in the 70s, but like barrel aged in the 50s. Distilled in the 50s, bottled in the 70s, opened in 2021. It's crazy. That's a journey for this rainbow trout. This is great. I mean, it's right up there in flavor with the Master's Keep Batch 1. Like, it, it has a lot of commonalities with that. It's just so weird. I mean, it's it's older than my dad. This liquid has existed on this earth for longer than my dad has. And that's here a, it is. That's a weird thing to think about. No, absolutely. It's a Very really strong. weird thing to think about. I mean, think of how old the tree was that they built the barrel out of. I think it's pretty great. I almost wonder if we should try a little of the modern... Ezra. Like do a side by side. Yeah, Ezra. with the old Ezra 7. Like, I hate to admit it, but the Ezra 7 almost smells cheap in comparison. This one smells newer. Right. It's like almost plywood in comparison to rich oak. I expected smelling the new one next to the old one to bring out like the funky basementy kind of old shit from the old one and it doesn't it just makes the old one stand out as a better more rich caramely vanilla yeah than the new one has i fully agree with that this is a sought after bourbon right now you know and it's good we like it we both like it uh but like in comparison like the wood smell coming out of this is like cardboard in comparison i'm gonna taste the uh the seven first since we've already tasted the fish. It's more bitter. It's got a lot more bite to it, if that makes Yeah, I mean, it's way, it's 27 proof points higher. It's going to burn a little more, but... There's nuttiness to it. It, it. it has like a peanut butter flavor, actually, that I really like. Mm -hmm. It's not bad at all. By no means discredit the old Ezra 7. I'm going to go back to the old guy. 
it just feels more balanced, like a little more well-rounded. Well, it's it, just a different animal altogether. Even if it were the same exact mash bill, it's you got to think of things tasted different back, like corn and shit. You know, now it's like corn is not the same as it was in the right. 50s. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been genetically modified right. time and time and time right. again. I just wanted to taste them. Not even to be like, which one is better, just to see if there was like a through line of a similar flavor dating back 60 years. You know, if it's the same, a similar product, but it's not. It's They're very different. The other oldest whiskey we have is the Wild Turkey Master's Keep. Do you want to see if that one stacks up? The nose is very different. The Ezra just has this like... Yeah, no, Warm, just this richness. vanilla, like, just such a like, round scent. You know what I mean? There is no spikiness to it at all. It is just soft, round, full. Somebody's making, like, sweet rolls in your house or something. I mean, like, even the 17-year Wild Turkey Master's Keep yeah. smells, like, almost plywoodish in comparison. I think we should taste it. I'm going to taste the Master's Keep first. It's great, and there is commonality right, actually this is, to the flavor. This is, I think, the closest in flavor that we're going to get to this. Probably. Very similar flavor profiles here. Different smells. It tastes, like, comfortable in a weird way. It's like a forest versus, like, new growth. Right. Master's Keep is sweeter. Ezra is more, it's, like, warm. But not in like a proof warmth, like just this kind of warm feeling. Yeah. That like No, I agree with that. It feels substantial when you're drinking. Yeah, it. absolutely. Like, it, it's, like it's there. I mean, this is still so good. So nice. I agree. I think but, this is a great bottle. But there's just something about it. It's so well rounded. It's fantastic. Like it's just full of flavor, of smell, of richness. All I could say is like Terry, we can't thank you enough. For, no, yeah, this, this was is... this was gifted to us. What is the oldest whiskey that you've had? Do you have any decanters sitting around? I mean, Brett Vermeule gifted us this one up here. Uh, we didn't drink the whiskey inside of it because it was opened already, and that's kind of where it gets dicey on an old decanter again thank you Terry we can't thank you enough this was so cool of you and everybody else for watching we thank you as well as always hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet on YouTube we appreciate it numbers are going up and that's cool to see thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time it's kind of an awkward pour out of a fish